Hello. Welcome to our group's podcast of the short story, The Story of a Necklace. Um, I'll begin with giving some background information on the author, Guy de Maupassant. Um, the author of the necklace, Guy de Maupassant, was born on August 5th, 1850, in Dieppe, France. His early childhood was influenced by mainly his mother after she divorced her husband when Maupassant was 11. He lived with his mother until the age of 13 when he was sent to a boarding school to further develop his education. Maupassant's first major accomplishment in life came when he saved a famous poet known as Algernon Charles Swinburne from drowning. This experience could have possibly led to his later passion for writing short stories. This, however, is unknown. Along with Swinburne, Maupassant later met another famous author in Gustave Flaubert when he was 19 years old. He later attended Lacy Pierre Corneau School in Rouen and turned out to be a fantastic student. The school was run by the Jesuits and was only for the wealthy because of its high academic curriculum and college preparatory courses. Once he graduated from college in 1870, the Franco-Prussian War began, and he decided to volunteer for combat. After serving for about a year, he was moved to Paris and found work as a clerk in a department where he reunited with the author he once met in high school, Gustave Flaubert. It was then that Maupassant's career began, when Flaubert became his literary advisor. After studying under Flaubert for seven years, Maupassant became the editor of several popular newspapers and became well known for his astounding work. It was in his free time during this period when he would write his own short stories and novels. Two years later, his first work of literature was published and was titled Boul de Suif. This collection was an instant hit and was the spark of his future. From 1880 to 1891 was when he was at the peak of his writing career. Maupassant would publish many collections and volumes that were all popular and loved by his readers. The year 1881 was when he published his first volume of short stories. Maupassant was a man that loved to spend time by himself. He would relax on his private yacht at times and would like and would always like to sit back and meditate. However, this need for solitude eventually turned into an obsession, which later led to a terrible situation. Maupassant needed to be alone for one reason, and it was that he feared death. The mindset that if he stayed away from the outside world, he would never die. This later got him so much that he tried to commit suicide, but failed after he was caught in the act. He was later shipped out to a private asylum where he was closely monitored until he died on July 6th, 1863. Even though Maupassant's life did not end so well, his earlier life can be viewed as a successful one. This is why many people believe that he was one of the most influential short story authors of his time period. No one else could be compared to what he wrote. This is also why he is known as one of the few that paved the road for modern short stories. I will now move in to the summary of the short story, The Necklace. The story begins with the introduction of the characters, Mathilda and her husband, Madame Loisel. Mathilda is described as pretty and charming, but because she had no dowry and no expectations, among other things, she was satisfied with marrying Monsieur Loisel, a clerk at the Ministry of Public Instructions. Mathilda was unhappy with her life because she and her husband lacked enough money to purchase luxuries such as fine clothes, nice furniture, fancy curtains, and jewelry. More than anything, she wished to be envied and admired by others. At dinner one evening, when the couple sits down for a dinner of pot a feu, a French staple of brother cooked beef, meat and bones, and vegetables. Monsieur Loisel tells his wife that he has a surprise for her. The surprise is an invitation to a ball 
which reads, The Minister of Public Instruction and Madame Georges Rompeneau request the honor of Mathilda and Monsieur Loisel's company at the Palace of the Ministry on Monday evening, January 18th. Monsieur Loisel hopes to impress his wife and hopes to help her fulfill her desires of being envied by others. At first, however, Mathilda is hurt by seeing this invitation and does not want to attend it because she does not own a dress that is suitable to go to such a fancy ball in. Monsieur Loisel is surprised that his wife does not want to go to the ball because he pulled a lot of strings to receive an invitation. Since Mathilda does not own a dress that is suitable for such a fancy event, Monsieur Loisel provides her with 400 francs to purchase a new dress. After purchasing her dress, Mathilda once again becomes sad because she does not own any jewelry and feels that she needs jewelry in order to feel elegant. But since Monsieur Loisel and Mathilda are not rich, they cannot afford any fancy jewelry. Monsieur Loisel then suggests that Mathilda visit her friend, Madame Forster, and ask to borrow some jewelry. When Mathilda arrives at Madame Forster's house, she is warmly welcomed and is allowed to borrow any piece she wants. After looking through all of Madame Forster's elegant jewelry, only one piece catches Mathilda's eyes. Mathilda favors a fancy, elegant diamond necklace over the other pieces in Madame Forster's jewelry collection. Madame Forster allows Mathilda to borrow this necklace. At the ball, Mathilda has a grand time, feeling rich in her new dress and flaunting a stunning necklace. Time flies and the ball is soon over. When the ball ends, Mathilda is ashamed to put on her modest wraps while the other women don expensive fur coats. Mathilda noticed how badly the cheap wraps contrast with the elegance of her ball dress and necklace. Also undermining Mathilda's affluent appearance is the fact that Mathilda and her husband are forced to take a coupe, a dated form of transportation. After getting in the coupe and removing her wraps, Mathilda realizes that she has lost Madame Forrester's diamond necklace. After arriving home, Monsieur Loisel decides to backtrack and searches everywhere for it but with no success. Panicking, Monsieur Loisel and Mathilda then decide to replace the diamond necklace rather than admit that it had been lost. To buy themselves more time, Monsieur Loisel suggests that Mathilda write to Madame Forrester and tell her that the clip of the necklace is broken so it is being sent off for repairs. Meanwhile, Monsieur Loisel and Mathilda try to figure out how to replace the necklace. They go to the jeweler, whose name was on the box the original necklace came in, in an attempt to find another necklace to replace the lost one with. To their dismay, they find out that he did not sell that necklace to Madame Forrester, but instead only made the case. Monsieur Loisel and Mathilda search many jewelry stores and finally are able to find a replacement necklace looking nearly identical to Madame Forster's one at a shop at the Palais Real. This necklace is worth 40,000 francs, but the owner would let them have it at a reduced price, 36,000 francs. That is a huge sum of money that Monsieur Loisel and Mathilda do not have. So Monsieur Loisel borrows money from many people in order to pay for the replacement necklace. After purchasing the replacement necklace, Mathilda takes it to Madame Forster and hopes that Madame Forster does not open the box to check on her necklace, only to realize that it is not the same necklace. Madame Forster does not open the box and continues to live her life as if nothing happened. Mathilda, on the other hand, can, cannot just go on with her life. She learns how to do heavy housework, which included washing the di dirty dishes, the linen, the shirts, and the dishcloths. She also would carry the slop down to the street each morning and would bargain with the fruiterer, the grocer, and the butcher. The couple had to dismiss their servant and even move houses. But finally, after 10 years of hard work, the debt as a result of purchasing a brand new diamond necklace is finally paid off. After the necklace is paid off, Mathilda sees Madame Forster in the street. Mathilda, who is aged by hard work, tells Madame Forster 
who still looks young, that she had in fact lost the diamond necklace she was lent and had been working hard for ten years to pay off the debt of purchasing a replacement necklace. Mathilda wonders how different life would have been if she had not lost Madame Forrester's diamond necklace. However, Mathilda then learns that Madame Forrester's necklace was fake and worth a mere 500 francs. I will now move into the symbols and themes that occur throughout the short story, The Necklace. Um, some symbols that occur during the ball within the story are the necklace, the coop, and the wraps Mathilda has while leaving the ball. The first symbol, the necklace, symbolizes glamour with being made of paste. On page 62, Madame Loisel made a great success. She was prettier than them all, elegant, gracious, smiling, and crazy with joy. All of the men who looked at her, asked her name, endeavored to be introduced. All of the attaches of the cabinet wanted to waltz with her. She was remarked by the minister himself. This is blatantly showing that, with fake glamour, Mathilda is able to look more beautiful and have every man want to dance with her. The other two symbols, the wraps and coupe, symbolize the poverty that Monsieur and Madame Loisel actually have. Again, on page 62, he threw over her shoulders the wraps which she had brought, modest wraps of common life, whose poverty contrasted with the elegance of the ball dress. She felt this and wanted to escape so as to not be remarked by the other women who were enveloping themselves in costly furs. Jealous of the other women, Madame Loisel tries to hide herself while wearing the wraps. Poverty in plain sight. Later in the passage, they went down towards the Seine, in despair, shivering with cold. At last, they found on the quay one of those ancient, noctambulant coops, which, exactly as if they are ashamed to show their misery during the day, are never seen round Paris until after nightfall. Seeing the only vehicle left, a coupe, they are disgraced to ride in it. The coupes also showing great poverty. After the ball, when Monsieur and Madame Loisel leave the car and are at their house, she realizes she loses Madame Forrester's necklace. Ironically, Madame Loisel thought it to have been diamond encrusted when it is actually made of paste and is relatively worthless. Ten years later, when Madame Loisel tells Madame Forrester the truth, Madame Forrester is pleased and shocked at the same time, seeing that Mathilda is aged much more so than herself. A significant character that displays great change is Mathilda. In the beginning, she does not work much and is dressed like a commoner. However, once she and her husband are invited to a great ball, she exhibits great change as the story progresses. In the passage on page 60, Mathilda knows that she has no dress, no jewels, nothing, and enjoys it that way. But she must have a dress and jewels to show up to the ball, and as though they are in the upper class rather than the lower class. And in borrowing a good friend's necklace, she gets the attention she needs. However, it comes at a cost. She loses the necklace and gets a new diamond necklace that takes the next ten years to pay off the debt to everyone they had taken loans from. This is what changes her greatly. Also, on page 64, she came to know what heavy housework meant and the odious cares of the kitchen. She washed the dishes using her rosy nails on the greasy pots and pans. Madame Loisel, looking very old, became a woman of the household and the commoners.